Welcome back to my channel guys and today we're going to discuss online safety, security, ethics, and etiquette for empowerment technology. Ako nga pala si Teacher Sir Sarandari School, Teacher 2 of Angeles City Senior High School, Schools Division of Angeles City. So, let's start! Welcome back guys and today online safety, security, ethics and etiquette. So that would be our topic for today and now for our objectives or outline we'll be discussing Data Privacy Act of 2012, Internet Threats, Threats to Personal Safety, Online Ethics and Etiquette, 10 Rules of Netiquette and of course we're going to explain who are the hackers. Okay. So, what is your opinion? Are we safe online? You may post this video and write your answer in the comment section down below. Another, what do we usually do that makes other people angry at us online? Again, you may post this video and write your answer in the comment section down below. So first, let's talk about Data Privacy Act of 2012. It states to protect the fundamental human right of privacy of communication while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. Of course, we really need to have our protection online, our privacy online. Not just um, giving information. Okay? For example, in Facebook, we don't just give our names, our uh, birthdays, our emails online. Why? Because they can use it against us. They can use it to access our, um, not just our social media platforms, but also our um, bank accounts, our bank applications. And if you are like me, a professional, someone who is working already and uses, let's say, uh, land bank application for my online transactions it would be very uh, dangerous to just give my information and they would not protect it from anyone else um, right now there's a problem with data privacy especially for the contact tracing okay if the establishment is just uh, writing it on a notebook and everyone can see it then they are violating the Privacy Act. Why? Your name, address, and contact number are sensitive information. It should be hidden from public view. So take note of that, especially if you are someone who owns a business. So internet threats. Let's talk about internet threats first. So first we have email scam, junk mail, or what we call spam mail. Usually, unsolicited commercial emails sent from an unknown source with identical message sent to multiple recipients. So, usually, do not are not dangerous but can be time and space consuming. Dangerous ones can carry vir viruses and other malicious software or malware or malicious wear. Okay, so uh, there are two kinds of spams. Okay, the one that comes from legitimate sources, like for example. Uh, I'm using Strava, if they have updates, they would spam it to all their users. Others, like for example, the ones that are creating viruses, they use spam to, or spam mail to send those viruses across multiple emails. And if you're not very careful <laughs> with, with your <laughs> way of reading, like for example, you click it immediately there will be a problem okay uh, it may lead you into another site that can get your information <coughs> or it can uh, it can direct you to a link that will download a virus to your computer or to your cell phone okay? so please be careful with this email spoofing is the creation of emails with a forged sender address the goal of email spoofing is to get recipients to open, respond, and engage with the email message. Email spoofing can greatly increase the effectiveness of phishing and other email-based cyber attacks by tricking the recipients into trusting the email 
and its sender according to Tungal 2019. It is usually used by spammers to hide the origin of their spam. Again, it's connected with the first one. Email spoofing, on the other hand, needs an interaction between the recipient and the sender itself. Uh, what do they do? They simply uh, get some information from you or what we call phishing. Phishing is the next one which is a deceitful practice of getting your personal information using email or text messages. Scammers may try to steal your password, account numbers, or social security numbers. If they get that information, they could gain access to your email, bank, or other accounts. According to Federal TR Com Cob 2019. This is what I'm telling you earlier. Most of the spam messages are used for phishing, especially those that don't came from legitimate sources. So basically what will happen, they will send you a link and let's say it looks like a legitimate link and they will ask you for some information like your name, address, contact number, uh, account number, password, OTP, social security number and after getting those information, they would use it to access what? Your bank accounts, okay? your other financial accounts, and you would be shocked if you hold a credit card and it will just increase in the amount that you'll be paying. Okay? And you know that you don't buy anything. So that is the reason why they are doing phishing. They are using your identity to purchase or to uh, imitate you or what we call identity theft so farming is a scamming practice in which malicious code is installed on a personal computer or server misdirecting users to fraudulent websites without their knowledge or consent okay basically um this is same as when you download when you click on a spam and it will download a software without your consent Okay. And afterwards, it will replicate on your computer and it will it will direct you to another website without your knowledge. So that is farming. Computer viruses are small programs or scripts that can negatively affect the health of your computer. These malicious little programs can create files, move files, erase files, consume your computer's memory, and cause your computer not to function correctly. So basically, uh, so we have what we call worms, okay? We have what we call uh, viruses, okay? Right? Once read many, that's the term for worm, okay? Wherein, once it enters your computer, you start your computer and it will replicate, replicate. It will consume your hard drive or your SSD or your NVMe or whatever storage device that you have. And it will also consume your computer's memory. How? Let's say in the 90s, we have, we experience denial of service or what we call DOS attack, wherein um, the computer will open multiple browsers once you open your browser. Okay? It will open until your memory is full, your RAM is consumed, and your computer will not work anymore. Okay? So, we also have spyware is software that spies on your computer where it captures information like web browsing habits, email messages, usernames and passwords, and credit card information. This is very dangerous because we don't know if some spyware is already working inside your computer. Okay, You don't know if someone is um, getting your browser histories or what you are browsing whom you are sending your emails, your passwords, and usernames for different sites. Especially for those who are using, let's say, uh, PayPal, okay? someone would track you there if someone noticed that you are more on online transactions. Pop ads or pop-up ads, a type of window that appears on top of or over the browser window of a website that a user has visited. It is also called as pop-up ads. It can also be used by hackers to steal your personal information such as your bank details 
Actually, right now, there are a lot of um, security features for the browsers to stop those pop-up ads. Okay. Uh, here, when you're a developer like me, sometimes you would need to have a pop-up window for your uh for your uh well this one for your system so it's not it depends on how the system is being developed but most of the time if the pop-up ad is opening and opening other other pop-up ads at the same time then there's a problem there's a virus already on your computer okay uh a pop-up ad and spam are the same they don't they don't threaten you or don't, they don't give uh, they don't endanger you online it depends on how they are used let's say pop-up ads that, um, that just open one browser and just a secured mini browser that can uh, facilitate secured uh, secure transmission of information then it's not a problem Okay, just like your spam mail where it comes from legitimate sources but if it consumes your computer memory or what we call the ram then there's a problem there okay before i continue here there's another one what we call a ransomware wherein the computer would be closed it's still working but you cannot do anything then there's a message there that you will need to pay a certain amount of um, money to the creator of the ransomware and there's a timer once you didn't pay on the given time then your computer will not be useful anymore okay they would give a link they would give the location on where you will pay and they would give the key to open your uh, computer to stop the ransomware there are a lot of attacks in the past on ransomware and a lot of companies are affected so here are some ways on how we are threatened online also we have cyber stalking wherein we we uh, just like what real world stalking is we look at the accounts of the, of someone we want to know okay for example in facebook in twitter in instagram while cyber bullying is the same way as bullying in school wherein you uh, you give names inappropriate names to, to an individual online you use the, them on memes you gang up on them by sending inappropriate messages to them so on and so forth online predation is the same as predation on uh, in the real world wherein you take advantage on those individuals that are vulnerable claiming you incite argument that will cause a lot of trouble okay so let's talk about online ethics now online ethics focuses on the acceptable use of online resources in an online social environment so we also have netiquette it's a combination of the words network and etiquette and is defined as a set of rules for acceptable online behavior so what are this behavior so first make real people a priority of course uh, if you meet someone online as much as possible you know them also in the real world okay prioritize those who are real because there are a lot of bogus accounts there are a lot of posers online use respectful language of course um, we need to be courteous with other people okay not just in the real world but also online when we talk to them share with discretion you don't just give your idea that's a problem right now it's an election period and a lot of people just flame out with other because of their belief in their respective candidates okay you share but you don't blame other people that's simple it's a sign of respect don't exclude others if you're in a group chat do not exclude someone who don't you don't like 
Like for example, in your GC at school or at work. Okay, if you don't like someone, you just let them be. Okay? Don't exclude them. Don't uh, turn them away on your group. Or don't remove them on your GC. That's simple. Choose friends wisely. Of course, in real life, this, this is applicable and also online. Be careful on whom you add online. Respect people's privacy. Of course, if they don't want to talk about something, don't force them to talk about it. Another thing is, um, if they don't want to answer your mails, your messages, respect that also. Fact check before reposting. Another problem right now, especially during important events like the election period. We just post, post, and post but we don't read about it we don't research about it okay disinformation and misinformation is is widespread right now because most of us don't read that's the problem okay we need to read first we need to understand we need to check if those information are real or not respond to emails emails promptly Okay. If it's an urgent mail, you need to reply as soon as possible. Update online information. Of course, you need to update your online information. Especially if it's about, let's say, LinkedIn. You need to update it so that uh, companies would see your profile. Okay, Know that you are, um, you are updating your skills. You are upgrading your skills. You are taking a lot of webinars, for example, or seminars. Okay passwords also you need to update your passwords from time to time think before you click of course think before you click or think before you post before you post something think about it first before you send a message think about it first because social media platforms like facebook and twitter do not delete your work or do not delete your posts or messages they save it on an archive in the database and when the time comes, if the court needs all your posts, needs all your messages, this company with the court order, huh? With the court order, these companies are required to give all your transactions, all your messages, all your um, posts regarding the case. And that would be a big problem for you. So hackers, let's talk about hackers. A clever or expert programmer who can gain unauthorized access to other computers. He can hack his way through the security levels of a computer system or network according to Christensen Hacker Definition 2006. This is very old. When we talk about hackers, there are two types of hackers. We have the white hat and the black hat hackers. The black hats are basically the ones that are defined here. Okay, why? Black hats are those who hack for their own gain. They don't use their skills as consultants. A white hat hacker is a hacker wherein, of course, if you see here, hack his way through security levels of a computer system or network. The difference here is white hat hackers are, are asked to infiltrate a network by the company itself to check if their security is strong or not while the black hat on the other hand they do the ones that on the first sentence was given an authorized access to other computers okay remember if you um if you're going to study com um, network security okay there are two ways on how you will be using it a black hat or a white hat so what's your opinion what are the ways to be safe online you may post this video and write your answer in the comment section down below and why is it important to know online ethics and etiquette you may post this video and write your answer in the comment section down below Remember, be inspired. Imagination is more important than knowledge according to Albert Einstein. For our next topic, we'll be talking about contextualized online search and research 
skill. I hope you learned something in our lesson today and we'll see you again next time.